How are you doing, guys? Welcome back. Looks like I'm back earlier than I expected, but hey, that's all good. Anyway, um, let's see. So, this is my favorite part of the stream, and also good night to everybody who just left early because it was pretty late. Yeah, thank you all for watching. So, this is my favorite. Oh, hi, Frankie. Yeah, this is my uh, favorite part of the stream. It's just to review. Well, I mean, it's one of my favorite parts, other than actually playing the game. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so normally what I do is I like to do a review of the game right after I played it when all the material is fresh in my mind. It is pretty early here. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I guess for you guys, some people, it would actually be closer to sunrise. Anyway, so I'm glad to have to be here again. So we're going to go ahead and do the review. So usually how I do it is like I try to say my thoughts and like what I liked and disliked. And... Um, yeah, so I normally... Hey, thank you, well, Illusion Queen. So I normally divide like the categories into like four things. So, story, graphics, sound, and um, gameplay. And usually after that, I just say like, I usually say, give, say like, what I recommended or what I not recommended and all that stuff. I don't do number ratings because they're... I don't like number ratings very much because they don't tell me anything. <laughs> I don't like putting things into numbers. I mean, I guess for some people that's okay, but <clears throat> not for me, so. Let's go ahead and get started. So, with this game, it came out in 2004, so of course I'll be grading against 2004 and not against, like, 2018. That wouldn't be fair, would it? <clears throat> in terms of graphics, but anyway, for story, I will say, like, this game's story is certainly... Like, okay, so I will take a really quick comparison to the previous game, Paper Mario. So, that game was very fluffy and cute, and, like, it was definitely... It was definitely, like, more of a very happy <laughs> story in a happy world. There was, like, maybe a little bit of, like... It was kind of, like, cliche against Bowser. You fought against Bowser, and he was just trying to use all the stars, and get his power, and we managed to save the world from Bowser going amok, but it was, like never felt the same as like this game this game is where they've turned up like their story the storytelling for the game so there's one thing the things that surprised me about the story in this game is just like like so many references to death seriously like we have a dead wife we have an undead pirate and we like and we nearly witnessed like a character almost dying like tech like if he hadn't been resurrected, like, if he hadn't been a computer, like, that would have been really, <laughs> that would have been, like, an in-game death. I'm like, oh my gosh. And even, like, sacrificing for someone he loved, I'm like, wow, this game, game has it all. And even, like, destruction, <laughs> a lot of revenge, too. Yeah, that's true. So, Coops wanted revenge for his father, who he thought was dead. Um, not Coombella, uh, who else was the revenge? Uh, revenge driven. Oh well, there was someone. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking. I, I don't know why I'm. I ha there was another story about revenge too. <laughs> so like, it was kind of, it was really interesting where they're like, even though this is still a child-friendly game, there's just a lot of stuff that's like, a bit on the darker side, as well. And even like the the end, like the music is so creepy. I'm like, this is the this game is for children. Even like the, the queen of like the demon queen is just like oh the queen of darkness. I was just like really <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna scare kids this way. But like I was like I mean I appreciate it a lot because I was like I guess this is a more like it definitely can hit a, an older audience as well, including like the kids. A kid can still play this and not be like oh uber offended, but it's just like wow there's some stuff in here. <laughs> And, uh, oh yeah, let me lower the game's volume too, because I figure that's a little loud. So, I really appreciate, like, them trying to kind of going more all out on the story, for sure. And it's, like, not just, like, a little, like, cheery story. And, like, there's actual, like, there's narrative stakes, and, like, the world is almost destroyed, and, like, you just feel this ominous thing. And so it takes everyone <laughs> coming... Like, it took literally everyone coming together to beat the source of evil. Beat the impending evil. So, I did like... Also, like, the, the humor is also really funny. And even the... 
And even the, let me think. Uh, even the party members are definitely, I think they're more memorable because there's a lot more going on. I mean, the only thing is like, yeah, there's still, there's not too much like inter-party interaction, which I kind of like, uh, well, that's unfortunate. So you can like, whoever you have out is the one that talks, but then because of that, like you can't, you can't see them play off each other. So there's not this sense of like, well, like what would, how would Gumbella really interact with, um, Coops or Miss Mouse or whoever. I do think that was a little bit, that's, there wasn't as, as much of that. And that's kind of like unfortunate because I think it's just because the way the game is, and like, it would have taken a lot, like in terms of like writing, that would also have been a lot more. They, they would have had, have had to do. And uh, yeah, so you only see whoever you pulled out. So I guess for us, we got a lot of Goombella. We sometimes got the other characters. <laughs> We didn't get much of Flurry because I didn't ever use her. So it's unfortunate too because you can't hear their takes. So you can't get... You can't hear like how they would respond in different situations than just their own story. Which is a little bit unfortunate. I do like the... Um, I do like a lot of the surprises too. Like sometimes you're like, oh the story's over. No, story's not over. Like chapter 4 was like one where... The, um, the game was like... Oh, you beat the bad guy. You're fine. No, you're not fine. Your identity was stolen. I'm like, oh no. That really like shocked me too. And like, I like how even the structures of the chap each chapter was so different. So you didn't feel like, you know, like sometimes like some games are like, oh, okay, go to town, check at the town. What's the conflict? Go to the conflict be by beating the boss in the dungeon, blah, blah, blah. Same thing. But this one's like, no, we're gonna have a, like, a tournament arc. And this one, the next one's like, gonna be like, a train. And like, it was like, really interesting how they changed the setting and narrative. And th that was really cool. So I really give props to like, the writing team for this game. And like, I'm, I'm super happy that even within like, it's amazing what you can do, like, within like, a child friendly context. And that, that always impresses me. Because one of the things is like, Okay, this might be a little bit, like, a little bit off the topic, but, like, I find that sometimes, like, because when you have un unbridled freedom, your the work kind of tries to be too hard to be edgy, and then they try to make it so dark, and, like, it's, like, brooding, and it's just, it gets a little, like, over to the top, and it's, like, you can feel it's way too, it's way beyond anything that reality. I like that there's, like, even... I think this game is good in that it shows you even in a world where like everything is like bright and we've cut bright colors and everything there can still be like sadness and happiness and tragedy and like vengeance and all this like all stuff that's like you can hear you would see in like a plot and like it's really cool that within these writing limitations you can still have genuinely moving stories I was just like that all like the tech part was just like oh gosh and even like, and I was like, even getting like the whole thing with like Miss with uh with Bobbery and like trying to get him to move past his wife's passing. I was like, really? We're gonna talk about? I'm like, I don't know if you kids can appreciate this, but I mean, as adults, like that's like a thing that's a real valid pro valid thing for someone who's like a widower, any widower, really. So like, revaining your like life back and so that was really cool I really enjoyed I really enjoyed that too Ludo is our doodle what what's going on oh no oh wow I've been raided for a party oh no and I'm not even playing the game anymore <laughs> I'm I'm just finishing with a review so but thank you guys for coming in Hi 2004 man, welcome. This is kind of a weird point because I'm actually just talking about the game I just finished. So, um, oh my. Anyway, so I, as I was saying for the, re I'm doing a review of the game at the moment. So yeah, the, um, so yes, I really like the story. <laughs> Tell me more. All right. So yeah, I really liked I really liked the story of the game. It was really I was really impressed. I with within like just the context of even giving a kid friendly how much they were able to cram in here. Like that's super good. Did I just finish the thousand yes, I actually just finished it. So 
I what I usually do on this stream is like do a little review of the game. And why who is your favorite character? Why is it Goombella? Oh, that's a tough one. Oh yeah, any favorite scenes? That's a good question. Like I guess like since we're talking about the story. Um I guess like oh my favorite part was Oh you know that little like joke like that little like scare the one where if you open his diary then you die that's hilarious i actually thought that was really funny like that's actually one of my favorite ones and one of my other favorite ones is like when um uh when like the penguin he's te he's talk he's selling like bowser that luigi got here i was just like laughing so hard i was like oh no he basically he was like no luigi got came here and got the got the hi hi everybody wow there's so many people thank you so much for stopping by i wish you had stopped by like when we were playing the game but it's all good and so like my favorite part like he's just like did i read all of lumpy's journal uh oh did i i think so oh no Oh, Lumpy, no, I did not read all of the story. I didn't invest and I was like, I completely forgot. Oh, shoot. Oops. I will have to read on my own time, so I, I'm i sure it's very entertaining. Yeah, the Green Rat. I totally did not read his story because I only saw him. Is the best part of the game. Wow. Okay, I guess I'll just check it out. I'm sure it's fine. Right, you can't. Yeah, I know this. I was like, oh, I didn't invest. And I didn't get a chance to read the story because I was like, oh, I'm going to totally, like, I was, like, in the middle of, um, oh, well, I'll definitely read it on my own time then. So, let's see. Anything else I want to say? Any other favorite scenes I can think of while we're talking about the story here? So, yeah, you can tell, like, I'm really enjoying, I really enjoyed the, did I read the story on the roof about the origin of the crystal shards? Oh, yeah, the bard. Oops. I didn't read all of it. Oops. So, there is a testament to, like, there's just actually, like, a lot of, like, extra lore as well. I also, I can add now. Because, like, yeah, there's, I didn't read Lumpy's diary. And I also didn't go through the bard. And I didn't do all the, um, all the requests. So, if I wanted to, I could definitely spend more time in the game, like, with the thing but I, I don't think I'll do that on stream because I feel like I kind of gave you guys pretty much the main story and the rest you can probably read for yourself I know there's just like I think doing it all on stream would probably be like it would make the game take longer and I'm like I'm kind of in the, about to move on to a different game after this but I will announce it after we're done with the review so, yeah, I had a lot of fun with the, the story as well. And favorite party member, before we forget. Ooh, that's a tough one. I, as I was saying, like, I definitely do. Miss Miles is still awesome. And uh, Miss Miles is awesome. We had Goombella. Goombella's nice, but you can't. Okay. This, the Yoshi. Vivian! Oh, Vivian. I'm... Poor thing. I do like Vivian a lot. Um, I think who? Actually, everyone. You know what? Honestly, I like everybody. I think, like, yeah. I do like Coops a lot too. Hiccup. Oh, the Yo, the little Yoshi. Oh, Yoshi. He's a cute little fella. I love him too. Omelet is such a cute name. Flurry is the worst. Ooh, well, I feel like as a character she's fine, but like as a character she's neat. But the problem is, I for utility she's. Ugh, I cannot like using her is just. Ugh, she's not really great. I don't know. I I for in terms of utility, I'm not that great. She's not that great. So I I hardly use her during the playthrough, and that's unfortunate because like I was I was saying, there's no. The story wouldn't let you, doesn't let you see any interactions inter-party, which is like a little bit. I feel like it's a missed opportunity. Oh well. And Kubella is very silly. 
yeah, if anything, like, you could argue what is Vivian's... Oh, anyway, I don't want to bring that... There's no need to bring that up. If you read about Vivian, that's actually... It is actually pretty cool. Like, if you play the Japanese version, you find out about Vivian's gender. So... It's actually really neat that they brought a character like that. It's kind of like... Oh, you know what's funny? It's like, the character... Reminds me of the character Birdo, which you, is Catherine in Japanese. Kasadin. So it's, it's just really cool. Um, anyway, I guess I've harped on enough about the story for now. And let's see. What else did I... So let me go to the next thing. So graphics are the next um, topic I usually go to. I... Kasadin. Catherine. Kasadin? No. <laughs> Salahadin. No, 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 that's a that's an actual historical figure. Yeah. Um, let's see. So graphics wise, even for 2004, it's still it's pretty good. I think it's well, you can definitely see that the improve the jumps and improvements from uh Paper Mario to Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. For one thing, the frame like the the frame rate is better. The fr the frame rate I think it's like 60 frames. Is it 60 frames? Let me check it this out. This seems like 60. Is it? Or maybe it might be 30. I think it's 60, but I I can't... I'm not a good frame counter. But I also like the fact that, like, the... Um, like, the graphics have definitely improved. And it's not even... Like, not that the style was, was very... Was, like, in the Nintendo 64 version was not great. But it, like, it definitely aged pretty well on the N64. But here it's, like, it, you can see it... Like an even nice, like it's even cleaner and smoother. So that was really nice. One thing I like about this game is that like the graphic style has just aged very well. So even like in 2018, I'm not like, oh, that's really, really ugly. Like maybe some of the 3D polygons are a little bit, there's a little bit of, a oh my goodness, why am I talking? I feel like I'm talking about like a PC gamer here, but there's some aliasing, but like it's really not enough to like, oh, this is so jarring. I can't stand playing this game. It's not like there are a lot of games that came from even like the GameCube, PS2, Xbox that don't look as nice, but this game has aged really well, and I'm really happy they had they kind of stuck to the. You can tell like they had really great art design, and so you walk here, you don't feel you feel like oh, it still looks very aesthetic pleasing. You can see all the little details on everything, and so I'm really impressed. And like for 2004, I'm sure like people's minds would have been like, wow, who would have thought that. Paper Mario could look so neat. And so, like... I don't really have anything bad to say. Because, like, it also... One thing I could tell it was very thoughtful was, like... Most of the time, like, you could tell what was interactable. One thing I don't like in RPGs a lot is that... Sometimes the graphics make it so that you can't tell if something's interactable. I also like the fact that they have like these like exclamations to show what you can interact with. So if you're ever like not sure, you can always like see like here's the text box for the Have I played Paper Mario with the game on the Wii? Uh it was the one I play on I play on the N64. I have not played Super Paper Mario yet. I was thinking about doing so at some point. So probably not immediately. So like yeah you can tell you can interact with things See, like, door, like, I like that. That's great. Thank you, game. Thank you for being clear on where I can go to. There's only, there's, like, so, there was so little, like, times where I was like, oh, I don't know if I can interact with something. So, that's a huge testament to the game. And the graphical design as well. Oh, you love Super Paper Mario. Interesting. I know some people are very, like, adamant that this game is the best Paper Mario. But, I mean, everyone has their preferences. So that would definitely be something I'm considering too. I heard the story is pretty cool for that game too. And like, I'm I'm quite open-minded. I can like, definitely, even if it's a huge gameplay change, like I'm, I can definitely check it out. Uh, what else I gotta say? I think that's the end of for graphics. I don't really have anything bad to say, which is good. This is good for a game from 2004. And oh, the story is really good. Okay. I will definitely. I've heard that too. You are not. You guys are not the first to tell me. So I'm really excited to definitely sink my teeth into it sometime. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? All right. So let's go to the next thing, which is sound. So that's all. Uh, I think that sums up how I feel. 
<laughs> the fact that you can just have like these random sound effects for your attack is just amazing. Dude, and like, I like I think like the sound design is really nice. The the sound effects are perfectly like goofy and like satisfying when you like nail those awesome like when you nail the action commands. You're just like it's so satisfying to hear that sound. And the music is really good in this game. Like they've turned it up, taken it up a notch from like, um, from the original Paper Mario. Like not that the original Paper Mario, but I still remember a lot of the tracks from the original Paper Mario in Nintendo 64. But um, yeah, they've definitely like did some like really cool. There's a lot of real cool tracks, and even like I think some of my favorite ones are actually from the final dungeon. Like just like this change and shifting. Even that final boss battle is like so creepy. I was like, "Am I playing? Um, I'm playing a game for kids? What?" <laughs> and so like the X dot fortress. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that track too, from the Moon Fortress. It's really, really cool. And of course, there's these like nice little. I, I like how I'm just like navigating the game while I'm talking about it. I mean, it's, it's nice that you you get a chance to, and so you can actually go back to. Oh shoot! Hold on, that's true. Can I talk to Tech again? Oh yeah, Rogueport's theme is really cool. See, you speaking of the the theme. I almost feel like this is cheating because like I'm showing a little story segment in the middle of a review. But it looks like you can return so you can actually return to the moon fortress. Oh, I did not know that. I was like, oh shoot. Oops. Anyway. <clears throat> But yeah, it's pretty neat that, like... Wait, can I actually talk to Tech here? Oh. No, no, this is the... Anyway, so, like, yeah, the sound... The music is really cool in the game. And the sound effects are always... Very fast. I think the battle sound effects are the most fun. And I like how, like, <laughs> you can hear the audience and it's just like... Oh, man. I can't wait to, like... I can hear the audience cheering you just to get, like, super hyped. So, that's really nice. Can you actually talk to Tech? I know, I'm just going to temporarily interrupt. This is the first time. Oh my gosh, I can talk to Tech. Uh, so guys, I'm going to temporarily pause the review just to talk to Tech. Because we might as well, since I'm here. Mario, I am pleased that I could see you again. I detonated explosives after you left. To ensure the base would never be used for evil. Of course, I was destroyed in the resulting explosion. But one day I regained consciousness and all was as before. Yes, everything. I do not comprehend why, but as I regained consciousness, I saw a light. And I thought I heard Peach's voice. How is Princess Peach? If she is happy, then, then I too am happy. I continue to hope for the continued happiness of you, Peach, and all others. So, yes, you can actually... There you go. I added a little something just to make sure you guys knew <laughs> that you can talk to Tech afterwards. So, yeah, this... I don't think I have anything else to say about the sound. Other than the fact... I don't really have a problem with it. I can't think of anything negative about it. I can't... Hey, he's a computer. We have the technology. We can build him. Make him better. Faster. Stronger. So, anyway, let me see. And now we get to the final, like, uh, category.
We actually don't know who did it. Grolus? I doubt it. He doesn't seem like that kind of guy. Harder, better, faster, stronger. It was Luigi. Well, anyway, it is just nice that... Oh. It is nice that um, Tech was able to survive. And he controls the moon base. Anyway, so I was going to go into head into go into gameplay. So this is the one part that I get to like it's a little bit more involved. So So anyway, speaking of um of gameplay, uh let's see. Okay, well guys, calm down. So, with gameplay, one thing I like about this game is that the battle system is not... Even though it's turn-based, I'll talk about the battle system first. Even though it's turn-based, like like the previous Paper Mario, there's a lot of like things to like make it like more exciting. There's action commands where you need to time things. So it's quite... It's a little bit akin to like we were playing another game called Shadow Hearts, and that was a lot of fun too. But that one required a lot of timing, and this game is also that type, kind of like a similar type of game. I guess it's like sort of a carryover from Super Mario RPG. Um, let me think. Oh, I'm blanking. Okay, yes. And so other than action commands, there's even like stylish commands, which I did not remember the timing for and I didn't use. And there's just a lot of like leeway you can do to upgrade yourself. Like you have, for instance, badges to make your life a lot easier in the game. And, um... Like, it's a lot of fun, and so, like, eventually, I, I, like, you can see what I've done here, where I've thrown almost all my points into BP. Uh, and to answer the question of the chatter, no, I have not played Mario & Luigi, I do really want to play that, too. I, my, I have a sister that has, my sister has actually played it, so I have definitely have been exposed to the series, but I never got to play it myself. And I definitely want to fix that at some point, because they look a lot of fun, too. So, in... <coughs> So in this game, like, I like the battle system a lot. Like, there's just a lot of freedom you can do to... <clears throat> there's a lot of freedom you can do with the BP system, and you can just, like, make your life... Like, increase your power, increase your partner's power, increase your defense, and, like, and many other things. And it's super awesome. So you can customize... I also love the audience system. You're the only one, TT, who actually spent that many level ups on BP. Oh, really? What is my level? That's a good question. So speaking of gameplay, like, our level... My level was 27. Shizubi! I know, I remember, like, the... So, you're incentivized to not only get, like, the star pieces, because you want to get some certain badges. You'll get shine sprites, which upgrade your party. And I think I love the audience system a lot, too, because, like... Like, it feels more like... It feels like every battle is, like, kind of important. I think a lot of times when you play... Um, play a turn-based game, you'll often... Oftentimes, like, sometimes, like, a bunch of... When you fight a bunch of mooks, it feels like the battle's trivial. And so it just gets like, Oh, I'm so bored. I don't want to fight the same enemies over and over again. But in this game, it's like... Yeah, the... A yeah, you have to fight the same enemy sometimes, but like you want to keep your... I mean, you sometimes dread fighting them, but every... Because every battle is like important. You can't fall asleep. You can't just mash A and then like call of the day. You have to time it. You want to keep your uh, the audience level up you, so you can have your star points, which certainly help you a lot. And I really like this like synergy of like, oh, every battle is kind of important. And like the boss battles are always really exciting because sometimes even the audience system like the game pool like i'm like oh no this they're gonna use the audience to like power themselves up or like they're knock out half the audience so you won't be able to build your star p sp as fast and yes like the original paper mar the numbers are st are actually quite small but they do feel but like every little like one upgrade to your attack really matters. And like you want to And so there's a lot of strategy involved. I think that I mean I yeah, I could talk about the battle system all day, but like I think that's 
that pretty much covers it. So like you have FP and HP as well. And so it's a lot of fun. And you, when you get weapons, like they feel meaningful because they really do matter. Like do you see this ultra hammer I've got here and the ultra boots. If I didn't have those, like they would really like your attack. If this actually matters to have higher attack by just one is crazy. And yeah, that's that's what makes like the battle fun. So like they're all the encounters are always a joy to do, which is not something I can say about many some RPGs. We've played even played on this very stream too. Oh, let's not talk about like some of the other some of the other games which I don't want to spoil either. Some of the other RPGs we played on this stream. Um, let's see. So regarding the outside stuff, so in Paper Mario, like you have you can walk around like this, you can smack thing, and there's a lot of and eventually you get a lot of skills like the super high jump, ouch my face, my head, and there's a lot of, or like little things. So I do like the fact that like they tried to, hey, you need to incorporate all your abilities together to get through the game. And oftentimes it's like, especially like later on, like in past the middle of the game, they start you throwing in more puzzles. So you have to think about ways to get to somewhere. And I like that a lot. It reminds me a lot of... Um, I it's almost Metroid. Like I don't know how to say. I know. I always like. I was. I was just trying to make a little joke there about how you can always hurt. You can hurt yourself very bad. So you can even like have abilities. So like, it's almost Metroid like because like sometimes you like you get new abilities and you want to backtrack to previous areas that you went through. So it's actually really cool that they tried to incorporate this like kind of like getting new abilities and outside of combat and then like kick him outside and even the combat like like the abilities like this one you can use that in battle and it does real damage and is actually pretty useful too and that's pretty awesome i really like that a lot where like they're even the abilities that help you outside combat can help you in combat uh my only gripe sometimes was that there were occasionally times i'm like oh the platforms were just wide enough that you had to be right at the edge and then you had to jump over. And like that got really like, and if you didn't, you dropped like a rock. So one thing about the game's physics is that like, Mario doesn't jump all that high. Look at this. And hi, uh, Cypo Creep. Welcome. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing a review, so unfortunately this is probably the last time you'll see the game for Quite a while. I know I was sad. I don't want to say goodbye to the game. But yeah, so like Mario doesn't do jump very high. And so sometimes like when you are doing like platforming, you ended up in this like state. Oh Superstar Saga did a similar thing with being the Oh, I see. I gotcha. Superstar Oh that's Mario Luigi, right? Oh I need to check that out. Everyone keeps telling me how good that game is. I really need to get on it. Like surprisingly, like I played like Super Mario RPG, Paper Mario, and this game. So I haven't, but I've not played Mario and Luigi. So I really should. But it's funny. I play a lot of intelligent system games, but like Fire Emblem, but not these games in particular. Uh, anything else I wanted to say? Oh yeah, I was just saying like yeah. Sometimes the platforming got a little like frustrating because uh, you you just like ugh, you miss it by an inch and you you just drop a lot. And I don't know if I really love the platforming controls. It's not the worst I've ever experienced, but it's a little it gets a little bit like annoying to do because like your the physics like the leeway is just so little, so it's just like oh And there were times where like I was using um our our dear friend omelet slash hiccup. And so I would do this and I still fall down. And it was like oh it's so annoying. <laughs> I feel like the platform is always kind of the kind of token of Mario RPG. I mean, they have to have it given the origins of the game, but I don't know. It's really, yeah. I mean, not that I love the platforming from even Mario RPG is not. Oh, the isometric jumping was so weird too. So I guess that's one improvement. At least the game is not isometric, so you don't have to worry. It's very like it's. 2D, so it's like, oh, just jump in one direction, jump in one direction, jump in one direction, and so it's like that. 
But like, yeah, you don't jump very high. So that is one really kind of thing that kind of was kind of weird when I was playing the game. So I know what? Not everything is perfect. Um, let's see. Is there anything about the gameplay? Like, I mean, the controls are pretty good. I don't have problems with. I have no problems with. Uh, The plane climb the sky and the fr oh yeah no kidding. I like how you missed the first attack on the foe because it's hard to tell if you're standing right in front of me. You're a piece of paper after all. Yeah, that's also true. Your depth perception is mess is weird too. So in this game, you can sometimes smack an enemy to hit them, but hit detection is a little weird, and sometimes depth perception can screw with you because you can't tell how far in the we call it the Z axis how far. You, the enemy is so sometimes you can just miss the enemy completely and it kind of sucks when you miss and you're like oh because you were trying you you were you sneaked up you slammed the button to hit the hammer but you miss because he's just you're just a piece of paper so i i don't really know how they could fix that problem i mean i guess you could watch shadow i think it was okay because in most cases you have a shadow to watch but in some areas, because the shadow was not clear, then you couldn't tell. I don't know, it's just kind of weird. And so that was just kind of awkward. And like, I guess, and the funny thing is like, we actually reproduced some bugs in the game. Oh, the entire game is not based on like, just um, platforming. Yeah, that'd be kind of odd. I will say, at least it's better than Zeno Gears. So yeah, Z let's not talk about the less said about Zeno Gears platforming, the better. I don't want to. That 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 just gives that very bad memories. Bad memories. But at least this, this game, like, it's still decent. So we had a bug, a text box bug, in the middle, like in the village. And that was just really funny. And there was one where we actually like. Oh, the depth perception problem. Oh, I see. Right. Oh, our Castle Crashers. Yeah. The text box bug was pretty funny. And there was another one where, like, I can't remember. There was another bug. I think... Oh, I think, like, the game... It was, like, a sound bug. I don't remember. It's just really funny. If you watch some of the streams, you will actually see a lot of the... Um, some of the random bugs. It's really cool. So I just thought that's really funny. It doesn't mean the game is bucky in general, but there are some weird things. But overall, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess like I guess that's it for gameplay. I can't really think of anything else other than like what I mentioned. So we're finally here. Let the final conclusion. What do I think about the game? Do I recommend it or not? And honestly, yeah, I recommend it. I don't really have anything like all the oh I don't have slots but all the like all the minor things I didn't like are like really like not they're so like not impo not so game breakingly bad that I don't think I think for most people they're really not gonna be bothered all that much like maybe sometimes like okay i will i let's go back to gameplay a little bit for a bit some of the puzzles are a little obtuse but if you think about it you will eventually be able to get it but i guess for some people it might be difficult so that's one thing i could mention like well the puzzles are a little bit like oh uh, they're a little like whoa i didn't really think of it that way so i guess i can just say like some of the puzzles can be a bit difficult but you'll get through it like we did here in the game. Anyway, so I was say I was saying so overall I definitely recommend the game. And like for me I would put it at thumbs up by. As in like Yeah, like the few issues are like not big enough. And like I think honestly, like for anyone this is a great game to play. Not only if you're like normally sometimes I like say okay thumbs up buy if you're an RPG player and thumbs up rent if you're not. But this game is like they're so the nice thing is like the mathematical calculations aren't even all that much, so it's like very easy for like children to play because you don't have to think about huge numbers. 
and you, you don't have to be a math major to play this game. And like, the RPG mechanics are light. There's a lot of action in every, like, in battle. So you're never, like, you don't have the typical, like, some people don't like turn-based battles because they get to be dull. But not this game. You're never, it's never dull. And you have to try really hard each time. So every encounter is significant. And, like, it's just great for everyone. Even as a first RPG, I think I would have liked it a lot as a... What, if I were like a child at the time and so yeah that's great I really recommend this game and you definitely should go oh anybody who has not played it for yourself you should definitely go play it if you the I guess the caveat is that you need a GameCube to play it you there are ways to not use the GameCube to play it but I won't discuss them here I mean obviously you can emulate it as well yeah, you don't have to high, have higher tolerance to awful gra Yeah, no, it's very welcoming. There's the game's not ridiculously long, so you don't have to invest so much time. And it's just the story is really good. The story is good. The gra graphics are nice. The sounds are good. The combat's really fun. I think like it's great. It's just great for like most gamers. Like I don't have a problem with. I don't have to like. Oh, some people won't like it, but. Or anything like that, or to have a caveat. So thumbs up, bye. You'll love it, and you'll like. You'll definitely want to keep playing it. And it's definitely something you can keep in your collection. You won't be. It, it's meaty enough that you have that you won't feel unsatisfied, dissatisfied, and it's like exciting enough and yet simple enough to play, yet endearing and charming at the same time. So great! I'm so glad I got to play the game. Like it's, I had come in with like relatively high expectations and I was like oh they I would those expectations were met I think they were actually exceeded at some points because I was like oh I didn't know I would like this story so much or like the game so much so thank thank you to Fla who was here earlier he my friend who lent me the game so this is on the real GameCube so yeah so yeah that's I I don't have anything really like any like the minor issues are so like not game breaking that it doesn't really I don't think it's enough to like stop you from playing the game and oh I did think of something like the inventory can be a bit like restrictive but honestly I think I could have been even a bit more like willing to use items I think I got some of it's just carry over from my my days of playing RPGs and being very conservative but yeah you can definitely get away with using a lot of uh, items so I'm also glad they give you a chance to improve it to increase your inventory thank goodness I was really worried at first but you can get it with but it is an optional stage so I guess I don't know that could be a bit annoying for some people like the inventory management being so like having so little slots but other than that that's not enough to like say oh the game's not yeah yeah yeah, I, I mean, that's the problem, man. Like, that's maybe, like, the biggest problem to deal with is the inventory. But if you're... Like, I don't think the game is so difficult that you can never... You won't be able to get through it if you're good at the timing. And you'll get better because you'll get a lot of chances to use it. You'll be fine. So, yeah, still thumbs up by regardless of the inventory. So, I recommend it. Thank you, ev thank you to everyone who suggested it. And the flaw who let, lent me the game. And I guess with that, we're just done with the, the um, review. Uh, 